So it came out of mainstream science, whereas most sports supplements generally come out of the marketing departments of companies with very little evidence to support uh, the claims companies are making. And this is, I believe, why creatine was successful. It, it was based upon very strong, sound scientific evidence. And we've tried to maintain that philosophy moving forward with the more recent research we've been doing on carnitine in muscle. Carnitine is, is found in, in our diet. 95% of the body's store of carnitine is in muscle. So if you eat meat, you're going to get carnitine in your diet. We've actually been working on carnitine here since about 1993, trying to determine what its function is in muscle. It's present in huge quantities. Over the space of that time, we've discovered it has two principal roles. One is in buffering acetyl group production in muscle when there's a very high rate of carbohydrate flux. So it basically maintains carbohydrate flux in muscle during intense contraction. Another important role is moving fatty acids into the mitochondria. And we, through a series of experiments, showed that it could actually be rate limiting to both this acetyl group buffering effect and in fat translocation into muscle. So knowing it has a, this really important metabolic role and knowing it's almost exclusively found in muscle, we then tried to develop ways of elevating the muscle store. So initially we simply thought, well, let's just feed it to people and the, watch the muscle stores go up. But we showed that actually even quite large amounts of carnitine taken orally didn't impact upon the muscle store. And then we also carried on where we gave carnitine directly intravenously so there'd be no barrier at the gut. And even then there was no impact on the muscle. The 25 years that people have been selling carnitine to people showing it will increase their performance was actually quite unfounded. So then we spent quite, you know, over the past 10 years trying to develop techniques to augment this transport of carnitine into muscle. So we found out that insulin is a pretty potent stimulator. So we've come up with ways of elevating insulin we know exactly how much insulin is required to do that. And we spend some time demonstrating that you can increase the store. We know now it takes about six months, or well, sometime between three and six months, of daily feeding with an insulin potentiating agent and carnitine to increase the store. But then once you get it into muscle, we've shown pretty profound effects during exercise. And this is then led on now to more clinical studies where we believe, for example, in aging that fat oxidation may be impaired in the elderly and that having an elevation in muscle carnitine may be beneficial. When the study was published in the Journal of Physiology, we showed following a, a bout of pretty intense exercise, which is at 80% of maximal oxygen consumption, you could maybe sustain that for 20-30 minutes at most. Okay, this is good, Chris. Keep it going. At the end of a fixed time period, we let the individuals do as much work as possible on a specially modified bicycle that measures work output. And these were university triathletes. And we were actually completely blinded to which volunteers were getting which intervention. Well, the next step is to actually see if we can establish our own university-based supplement company. So a spin-out company is being created that will be entirely evidence-based. We've already made contacts with some elite athletes out there to tell them about um, the research we're doing. A website is being established which will have all of the papers that we published on carnitine. If we make this model work it will actually permeate back to research. So a large proportion of the income from this company will actually come back to the lab and allow us to carry on and push for the next innovation, either around quarantine or, or some other uh, intervention.